there. Welcome back to the Think Grow podcast. This is your host, Ruben Chavez. Thank you for tuning in again. So in the past few episodes, I've been talking about this idea of acceptance, or as I've termed it, integration also. You know, I'm building upon many different people's ideas. These are not specifically my, my own ideas, but I'm processing this in a way that I think will resonate with some of you with whom it hasn't resonated before. So I I I want to continue this series by answering an objection that has been raised that that I had before also, which is, look, you're saying that we should face the problems that we have and accept them and, and not turn away from them and not reject them. But what about the unpleasant things that happen? Like, they suck. Why should we do this? Why should we accept things? Why should we integrate them into our lives rather than just avoid them? It's a very reasonable objection. I think it's the natural thing to want to do. But one of the reasons, as I've discussed, is that when you ignore things, they actually get worse. They don't go away. So it's not a, just from a tactical standpoint, it's not a good idea. You shoot yourself in the foot. But the second reason is because you actually don't know where opportunities lie. And you also don't know whether a situation or an event is good or bad. In the final analysis of things, reality is so complex that it's actually not possible for your human brain to calculate whether an event will ultimately work out in your favor or not. And in fact, sometimes the same event will be both good and bad. That's how it often is. Look, like we're on a spinning rock in the middle of space. This rock is like 4 billion years old. And we're just limited creatures trying to get along in life. But we really don't know what reality is. We're not programmed. We're not evolved to understand the true nature of reality. And because of that, this idea of acceptance or integration, if you want to think of it like that, is really kind of a meta strategy, not for understanding the true objective reality of of life, but for dealing with reality as it presents itself. Let me take a step back here. One way to go about your life is having the mindset that, hey, I have these preferences. I have this idea of how my life should go and how my day should go and how people should be. And that's how it should be. And if I encounter something that is different from what I expect, I will be upset and I will be mad. And I know people don't frame it like that, but that is one mentality that people have. It's like, oh, this thing didn't meet my expectations and now I'm upset or depressed or anxious. It's like, oh, the waiter didn't bring me the the right dish that I ordered or, you know, my coffee was too dark of a roast, whatever it is, like you have these expectations and then when they're not met, you're emotionally dysregulated. Okay, that's one mentality. The other mentality is I will deal with whatever happens and I will engage with reality as it presents itself as much as possible, regardless of whether or not it matches up with my particular preferences or expectations. And in fact, my preferences or expectations are quite low because what I'm here to do is just engage with reality because life is so full of nuance and complexity that it's enough for me to just engage with reality as it is. That's another mentality. And it's kind of radical in a sense, but I think it's actually the mentality that the great spiritual teachers and many great figures in history have adopted, whether or not they've explicitly articulated it. I mean, think about how crazy it is and how just counterproductive it is to hold the former mentality that I described. You have all of these expectations. You, you one person in this vast universe that's billions of years old, you have some individual preferences that 
who knows how you got them, but you have them. And you believe that the world, the entire world should conform to your particular preferences. That's a wild mindset. Hey there, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about one of our sponsors for this show, Skillshare. I love learning new skills and keeping my mind sharp. Skillshare is by far one of my favorite ways to do this. It's an online learning community with thousands of different classes for creative and curious people. You can take classes on writing, photography, cooking, productivity, social media marketing, and much more. As many of you know, I've been working on a book. A while back, I took a couple writing classes on Skillshare, one by essayist Roxane Gay and another by Simon Van Bui, who's an author. And I was just blown away by the depth and clarity and practicality of these classes. Both really helped me to hone my skills and improve my craft. Skillshare is all video-based and it's all self-paced, which I love. And most classes are under an hour with short lessons to fit any schedule. I'm talking like 10 minutes per lesson in most cases, which is a very digestible way to break up any new subject. And it's less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription. So explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash TGP. And the first 1,000 people to use our link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Receive free access to thousands of classes for a limited time. Be one of the first 1,000 people to sign up at Skillshare.com slash TGP. The reality is we are just limited creatures living in a very complex reality. And the insane technological and cultural advances that we've made, it makes it seem as though everything is nice and orderly and that reality is very easy to assess and and understand. But culture, what it does is it actually covers up the complexity and the chaos of reality, of nature, you know? And so it protects us to some degree. But the truth is that things are, are wild and we don't know whether when we encounter an event, when we experience something, we actually don't know the true nature of that event. And we try to label it as good or bad, but the way it unfolds over time is so complex that it may end up being, you know, something that we deem unpleasant or unfortunate may end up being a blessing. It may end up being a a very good thing in our lives. And, And that often is the case. The same is true on the other side. You know, you could experience something very good that may turn out to be not so good in the long run. Part of the illusion is that we can attach words and labels to events and it makes them seem as though it's just one event. But really, events are many different, you know, it's hard to define where one event starts and another begins or where in the same event starts and ends. It's like you can say the economic collapse of, you know, 2008, but is that one thing? Like, no, it's not one thing. It's it's actually many different things. It's a label we give to a conglomeration of different events, like people defaulting on their loans and uh, shady deals and all these different factors that went into it. But we have one label for convenience sake. I mean, it's very useful f- to have language, obviously, but it makes it seem as though the world is tidier than it is. And again, things are very complex and constantly unfolding. So my point is that the only reasonable and rational way to approach that complexity as a limited creature is to accept it and to engage with whatever reality happens to present to you. Whatever experience you're having in the moment is what you should be engaging with and what you should be accepting and integrating into your experience, into your life in a way that is productive and in a way that helps you move forward. The alternative would be to reject it and to separate yourself from it and to resist it and to say, I don't want this to be happening. And that's a perfectly understandable position because it's difficult to want unpleasant things. Although I think you can actually get to a point where you view unpleasant things as containing complexity and opportunity. But let's just say that you're not there yet, which I'm certainly not there all the time. But even if you just regard the situation you're facing as something that is happening 
and not ignore the reality that it's happening, that's a really big step in the right direction. I, I know this sounds simplistic. I know it sounds a, l- a little bit even condescending. It's like, oh, well, yeah, I, I know things are happening. I know unpleasant things are happening. They're happening to me. Yes, that's true. But I think that what we often do that leads to a lot of unnecessary suffering is instead of leaning into that unpleasantness, that that experience that we regard as unfortunate or uncertain or whatever it is, we resist it. And that resistance to the experience makes it makes us suffer more. It gives us anxiety. It makes us more depressed. In any situation, if we're resisting that or pushing it away, it does lead to a situation where we're suffering unnecessarily. On the other hand, if we are able to sit with the situation and allow it to be there, and as I've said, integrate it into our experience, we can at least be more clear-minded about how to most effectively deal with the situation. But even more than that, we will, I, I think, and I've experienced this firsthand, it, it just, it's, it's a shocking revelation, but it's true, you actually experience much less suffering. You experience the pure unpleasantness of the situation as opposed to the suffering that is layered on top of the situation because of the stories we tell ourselves about why we shouldn't be experiencing it. So that's a really useful way to to look at it, I think. Um, If you need a rational or reasonable explanation as to why you should accept and confront the reality and engage with the reality that presents itself to you as it is without wanting it to be different, that's a pretty good reason. We don't know what reality is. And so the best we can do is engage with it as it manifests itself in our experience. Okay, so I hope this was helpful to you. That's all I have to say. I'll see you. Hey, thanks for listening. You can find the show notes for this episode and all other episodes on my website at thinkgrowprosper.com slash podcast. That's where I put all the links and resources mentioned in each episode. It's also where I put the outlines of topics covered, which is a really good way to refer back to episodes in the future. Lastly, if you enjoyed this episode, I'd love to hear about it. Feel free to leave a review on iTunes with your biggest takeaway. I make it a point to read all the reviews. You can also screenshot this episode and share it to your social media along with something you learned or found interesting. And tag me in your post because I'd love to see what you found interesting. Say hi and thank you for your support. (music) 